Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Welcome and thank you for joining us on this beautiful Georgia morning. My name is Captain Joseph Alcorn and I'm the Unit Public Affairs Representative for the 1st Battalion of the 507th Parachute Infantry Regiment. Today is National Airborne Day and we wanted to celebrate this by focusing on the graduation of ACO's Back Class 29-24. The Airborne School creates tens of thousands of paratroopers for the Department of Defense to conduct, conduct joint forcible entry, entries across the world. So we wanted to focus on the situation here and uh, we'll get it turned over to the company and thank you for joining us again, uh, Fort Moore, the birthplace of the Airborne. August 16th, 1940, marked the first official Army parachute jump, validating the innovative concept of inserting United States ground combat forces behind a battle line by parachute. On August 14th, 2002, President George W. Bush issued the following proclamation. The history of airborne forces began after World War I, when Brigadier General William Mitchell first conceived the idea of parachuting troops into combat. Eventually, under the leadership Major William Lee of Fort Moore, Georgia, members of the Parachute Test Platoon, pioneered methods of combat jumping in 1940. In November of 1942, members of the 2nd Battalion, 509th Parachute Infantry Regiment, conducted America's first combat jump, leaping from a C-47 aircraft behind enemy lines in North Africa. This strategy revolutionized combat and established airborne forces as a key component of our military. During World War II, airborne tactics were critical to the success of important missions, including the D-Day invasion at Normandy, the Battle of the Bulge, the invasion of southern France, and many others. In Korea and Vietnam, airborne soldiers played a critical combat role, as well as later conflicts and peacekeeping operations, including Panama, Grenada, Desert Storm, Haiti, Somalia, and the Balkans. Most recently, airborne forces were vital to liberating the people of Afghanistan from the repressive and violent Taliban regime. These soldiers continue to serve proudly around the world in the global coalition against terrorism. The elite airborne ranks include prestigious groups such as the 173rd Airborne Brigade, Combat Team, Sky Soldiers, 82nd Airborne Division, All-American, and the Screaming Eagles of the 101st Airborne Division. Airborne forces have also been represented in the former 11th, 13th, and 17th Airborne Divisions and numerous other airborne, glider, and air assault units and regiments. Paratroopers in the Army's 18th Airborne Corps, 75th Ranger Regiment, and other Special Forces units conduct swift and effective operations in defense of peace and freedom. Airborne combat continues to be driven by the bravery and daring spirit of Sky Soldiers. Often called into action with little notice, these forces have earned an enduring reputation for dedication, excellence, and honor. As we face the challenges of a new era, I encourage all people to recognize the contributions of these courageous soldiers to our nation and the world. Now, therefore, I, George W. Bush, President of the United States of America, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Constitution and laws of the United States, do hereby proclaim August 16, 2002, as National Airborne Day. As we commemorate the first official Army parachute jump on August 16, 1940, I encourage all Americans to join me in honoring the thousands of soldiers, past and present, who have served in an airborne capacity. I call upon all citizens to observe this day with appropriate programs, ceremonies, and activities. In witness whereof I, hereunto, set my hand this 14th day of August in the year of our Lord, 2002, 
and of the independence of the United States of America, the 227th, signed George W. Bush. The American paratrooper, born a fire in the sky over the World War II, more than half a century ago. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Staff Sergeant LaCour, and on behalf of the Commanding General of the United States Army Maneuver Center of Excellence, Major General Owen Sully, and the Commander of the 1st Battalion, 507th Parachute Infantry Regiment, Lieutenant Colonel Christopher Galilli. I would like to welcome you to a live demonstration of precision freefall performed by members of the Command Expeditionary Parachute Team, Silver Wings. For today's demonstration, three jumpers will exit from a UH-60 Blackhawk from an altitude of 10,000 feet. All jumpers will exit with smoke and build a star formation while in freefall. You will direct your attention skyward to the aircraft. The jumpers are just moments away from their exit point. At this time, the jumper is looking out of the door of the aircraft. Through a series of hand and arm signals, the jump master relays heading corrections to the pilot, maneuvering the aircraft to the site exit point for the jumpers. Watch closely as you may see the nose of the aircraft move slightly left or right in response to the heading corrections. The jumpers complete their final gear checks and move to their exit position. A thumbs up signal is given. Watch momentarily for the jumpers to exit the aircraft. Ladies and gentlemen, the jumpers are just moments from their exit points. Once you see them exit, they're directly overhead. In just a moment, we should see some red smoke. You can see those minor heading corrections as the aircraft maneuvers to the precise exit location. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. The jumpers are out and the smoke is on. The jumpers are now reaching speeds of up to 120 miles an hour and will maneuver their bodies to the formation by moving their arms and legs and shoulders.
And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, a star formation spinning toward the Earth. At a free range altitude, the jumpers will turn and track away from one another, creating a bomb burst effect. The jump master will then signal for all the jumpers to open their parachutes. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, tracking away from one another. As they disappear behind the trees. And there's a signal, and now you have three beautiful black and silver canopies of the silver wings. The type of parachute the silver wings are using today is called a ram air parachute. Because of their design, the parachute, when viewed from the side, closely resembles that of an aircraft wing. This allows the canopy to be extremely maneuverable. It has a forward speed of 25 miles an hour and a glide ratio of 3 to 1. This means that for every, one, for every 3 feet of forward movement, it descends only 1 foot in altitude. To maneuver the canopy, the jumper has a set of control lines. To turn the canopy left, the jumper pulls down the left control line. And to turn to the right, the jumper pulls down on the right control line. For rapid descent, the jumper will use their front risers, which will cause the canopy to dive and spiral, creating speeds of up to 60 miles an hour. To land the canopy, the jumpers will pull both control lines down simultaneously, blurring the canopy for a nice, soft standing landing. As the jumpers near the landing area, you will see them maneuver into a stack formation. This will allow the jumpers to land at the target area and then make room for the next jumper to follow and land at the same location. This is the same technique used by specialized units for high altitude, low opening, or halo, which is military freefall for sophisticated infiltration. Each jumper will fly a pattern, a traffic pattern, and at a thousand feet, jumpers will face into the wind for a penetration check. Jumpers will check their speed across the ground and then turn and fly a downwind leg, turn 90 degrees from the target for a base leg, and then face into the wind for final approach. Once on final approach, keep a close eye on the jumpers as they will make minor corrections to land directly center on the target. Ladies and gentlemen, here comes our first jumper. Today's first jumper hailing from Fort Walton Beach, Florida, with over 1,500 free fall jumps and 11 Bravo, Staff Sergeant Matthew Burgett. Watch carefully as he maneuvers his canopy in for a nice, hopefully soft, on target landing. Okay, give him a hand. Our second jumper coming from the Dominican Republic with over 800 free fall jumps. Sergeant First Class Ray Reynoso as he brings it in for a nice on target landing. And our third jumper today from Livermore, California with over 600 free fall jumps. Staff Sergeant Eric Wood. Let's give it, let's make some noise as he comes in. Come on, Eric. Let's see that nice, soft. On target landing. Oh, come on. Let's give it up. Good big. Let's give a big hand of applause for our three jumpers today. Formed in 1965 by the director of the Air Force Department, the team can trace their origins back to 1985 as members of the Airborne Air Mobility Command. The mission of the Silver Wings is to represent the United States Army Maneuver Center of Excellence while demonstrating the free fall capabilities of today's airborne forces. Stationed at Fort Moore, Georgia, each member of the Silver Wings is a qualified parachutist and is assigned to the United States Army Maneuver Center of Excellence. In order to be accepted on the team, each member must have an outstanding military record, as well as the parachuting skills and experience necessary to perform demonstration jumps. Since their first jumps in August of 1965, Silver Wings have inspired countless airborne students, supported demonstrations in all 50 of the United States, as well as over a dozen foreign countries, and have been, have been ambassadors to the Airborne School, the United States Army, the Maneuver Center of Excellence, Fort Moore, and the United States Army. On behalf of the entire team, I would like to thank you for being such a warm and receptive audience. Airborne, all the way. Ladies and gentlemen, the ceremony will begin in two minutes. Please silence all electronic devices. Thank you for your cooperation in advance.
Brigadier General Blanchard, Colonel Retired Chapa, Command Sergeant Major Kelso, Command Sergeant Major Lewis, Command Sergeant Major Drago, distinguished guests, families, and friends, on behalf of Lieutenant Colonel Christopher Galuli, Command Sergeant Major Richard Couturier, and the cadre of the 1st Battalion, 507th Parachute Infantry Regiment, welcome to the graduation Alpha Company, Class 2924. Please stand for the playing of the national anthem and remain standing for the invocation given by Chaplain Moen. Please join me in a word of prayer. Almighty God, I come to you this morning seeking your blessings over this graduation ceremony for the basic airborne course. How special it is to hold this graduation on National Airborne Day, the anniversary of the first official Army parachute jump back in 1940. Thank you, God, for the efficient instructions, the good weather, and the full canopies that have allowed these men and women to complete this milestone course in the career of an Army soldier and to join the legacy of those who have come before them. The silver wings they are about to receive represent both the training and the willingness required of all paratroopers in the United States Army. The Lord once said to Joshua, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened. And do not be dismayed. The Lord your God is with you wherever you go. My prayer for these graduates is that you would be with them wherever they go and that they would be strong and courageous paratroopers no matter what challenges they face. Bless them, their friends and families, as we celebrate their accomplishments today. Bless the cadre for their tireless dedication. And God bless our army and our country as we strive to do what is right. I ask all these things in your holy name. Amen. Please be seated. An American general by the name of Billy Mitchell first conceived of the idea to parachute troops into combat against a hostile force at the end of World War I. At the outbreak of World War II, Russian and German paratroopers spearheaded the assaults. The effectiveness of these troops startled the entire world and there was no longer any doubt about the power and capabilities of these newly created instruments of war. In early August 1940, the United States prepared to enter the war and begin an all-out program to produce the American paratrooper. Today, Students attending the basic airborne course are volunteers, just as they were in 1940, and hail from the United States Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine Corps, as well as some allied countries. They must also be in good physical condition and meet physical fitness requirements since over 90% of the training is strenuous and involves repeated bodily contact with ground. Up to 425 students begin the course each week with one of the three basic airborne training companies. The trainers, also known as black hats, conduct the course in two phases. 
The first is a training phase comprised of a ground and tower week and consists of a series of progressive lectures coupled with practical work on the many apparatuses in the airborne course. Each of these apparatuses is designed to teach the students to properly exit an aircraft and perform a safe parachute landing fall. The second phase is a jump week where each student applies skills learned during training phase to complete five qualifying static line parachute jumps from a high performance aircraft. The company started training three weeks ago. Today, the students standing before you are pronounced paratroopers. The low ratio of paratroopers throughout the Department of Defense indicates not only the difficulty of the airborne course, but also serves to clearly demonstrate the dedication to excellence, courage, and determination of those standing before you. You have every reason to be proud. Sir, the company reports the completion of airborne training of 374 Ladies and gentlemen, it is our distinct privilege and honor to welcome our guest speaker for today's graduation, Colonel Retired Robert Choppa. Colonel Choppa has served in several operational and training units in the infantry slash maneuver command and staff assignments at platoon, detachment, company, battalion, brigade, division, corps, and army level. Colonel Choppa has served in mechanized, light, airborne, ranger, striker, and long reconnaissance infantry in various worldwide assignments to include Canada, Mexico, South Central America, Europe, Africa, Asia, Australia, and the Arctic. Colonel Choppa has served as an infantry rifle platoon leader, ranger platoon company executive officer, company commander, battalion commander, brigade operations officer, brigade commander, chief of infantry, and the commandant of infantry. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. So 24 years ago, President Bush decided that today would be National Airborne Day to honor all of the Armed Forces Airborne Units and the American Paratrooper. 16th of August was designated that day, and Congress shortly thereafter passed a resolution designating it National Airborne Day. It's based on the 16th of August, 1940, when Major William Bill Lee led the first test parachute jump here. And what do you think was going through his mind? He was thinking, man, I hope this works. Airborne training has taken place here at Fort Benning and now Fort Moore on the fields behind the graduating class for over 84 years. It's in this area with its historic towers, its training apparatus, and the black hat instructors all combined in this frying pan of Georgia weather that makes paratroopers. Some people say the toughest part of jumping is the landing but not in Bill Lee's mind. The toughest part of the entire parachute endeavor was finding the right soldiers and leaders that comprised the heart of an airborne unit. Paratroopers had to be extremely fit, disciplined, hard, smart, and tough. Paratroopers needed to be ferocious and fearless, confident, and courageous. The airborne school was designed to find those men, prepare them for the rigors of combat, and get rid, rid of anyone who didn't meet the standard. Two years and three months after the test platoon stood up, on 8 November 42, the 2nd Battalion of the 509th Parachute Infantry Regiment conducted America's first combat jump behind the lines of the Axis forces in North Africa to seize two airfields in Algeria as part of Operation Torch, setting the conditions for a successful amphibious landing. 
jumping from C-47 aircraft, the Dakota, commonly referred to by the paratroopers as the Goonie Birds, airborne forces combined with the Army Air Corps to revolutionize air ground operations, setting conditions for successful offensive operations, and established airborne forces is a key component of our American military strategy. Airborne forces continued Sicily, Italy, France, the Netherlands, Belgium, and Germany. Two divisions, the 82nd and the 101st, jumped into Normandy and opened the causeways and secured the objectives for the 4th Infantry Division, who arrived by amphibious landing. Our partners, the British, conducted airborne operations with the 6th Airborne Division over to the west. These were comprised 18th Airborne Corps. America would form the 11th, 13th, 17th, 82nd, and 101st Airborne Divisions during World War II. They'd fight in the Pacific and in Europe. Paratroopers have been used in almost every conflict that the U.S. has been involved in. Korea, Vietnam, Grenada, Panama, Iraq, and Afghanistan. The legacy of past paratroopers is kept alive by the paratroopers standing before you. They're physically tough, smart, optimistic, and eager. They've overcome their personal fear by jumping out of an aircraft in flight. They have the skills of battle and the pride of knowing they'll accomplish this mission with honor. It's their spirit, that of a warrior, that makes them decisive. They have the heart of a lion and the souls of a conqueror. The establishment of National Airborne Day serves multiple purposes. It honors the legacy of airborne troops who've served and sacrificed in defense of this country, paying tribute to their bravery and commitment to duty. Secondly, it raises awareness about the importance of airborne operations in military history and contemporary warfare, hiding this, highlighting the specialized training and skills required for airborne forces. Finally, it serves as a reminder of the camaraderie and esprit de corps shared among airborne forces, fostering a sense of pride and unity within the airborne community. Congratulations to all of you who are before me today and are about to have your wings pinned on. You're no longer officially a leg. You're airborne and a paratrooper. I'm proud that you'll keep You'll join me in wearing jump wings. My message to you is make a difference in everything you do and never quit. Keep the traditions and culture of the airborne in all you do. Always accomplish your mission. You make America proud. Thank you all for your attention all the way. At this time, selected members of Alpha Company will be recognized by the battalion command team. The first paratrooper to be recognized is the youngest member of the company, the Keeper of the Wings. The Keeper of the Wings is Private Dayton Renz. He carried this set of wings throughout the three weeks of training as a symbol of the spirit in the company. His wings will be pinned by the battalion command team, accompanied by Colonel Chopper. The Airborne School selects an enlisted and officer honor graduate for each cycle. The honor graduates are selected for their attention to detail, self-discipline, physical fitness, and ability to master all training tasks. The honor graduates receive a plaque from the battalion commander. The enlisted honor graduate and recipient of the William Red King Award is Private Mikyu Torres. The officer honor graduate and recipient of the William T. Ryder Award is First Lieutenant Connor Kozad. Please give the awardees a round of applause.
United States Army Airborne Legacy began here in the summer of 1940. That legacy continues to live on and perpetuate itself throughout all great paratroopers of the past and present, and it is only fitting that we recognize them here today. Would all graduates of the United States Army Airborne School please stand or raise your hand to be recognized. At this time, second, third, and fourth generation paratroopers move forward in front of the company commander. If you are a paratrooper, past or present, that is a graduate of the United States Army Air Force School and pinning the wings on your child or grandchild, please come forward and position yourself in front of your paratrooper. Additional family members, feel free to move forward to take photographs at this time. Again, this is only for those graduates with a child or grandchild graduating today. All other family and friends will have the opportunity to pin their graduate later in the ceremony. As a reminder, the Department of Defense strictly forbids the issuance of blood wings. Your cooperation is greatly appreciated in this matter. Gentlemen, I present to you second, third, and fourth generation paratroopers. Sergeant, present the wings. Airborne. All the way. Lieutenant Sergeant, present the wings. All the way. Ladies and gentlemen, the first sergeant has directed the instructors to present the wings. Feel free to move forward and pin the wings on your new paratrooper. Again, we ask for your cooperation in abiding by the Department of Defense's policy by not giving blood wings.
Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. Make your way back to your seats. Please stand for the Airborne Creed and remain standing for the playing of the Army Song.
sir. This concludes today's ceremony. First sergeant, take charge of the company. Airborne. All the way. Right? Right? right. Hey! concludes this morning's graduation ceremony for Airborne Class 2924. The paratroopers will now return to the company to complete out processing. Thank you for your attendance. Hunters from the sky, rangers lead the way. Airborne, all the way. Hey, listen, this is Seth. We're going to do some more. So please do not shut the feed down. Please do not shut the feed down. Okay. One, two, one, two. Okay, go ahead. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you again for joining us on this National Airborne Day celebration and graduation. If you have questions about what you saw today or would like to know more, please visit go our Facebook page at U.S. Army Airborne School. Uh, if you would like to join the Army, or someone you know would like to join the Army, or you think we have what it takes to join the proud and storied lineage of the Airborne community, please visit GoArmy.com. Now, if you want to stick around for a few extra minutes, we have a quick interview with the two distinguished honor graduates, Lieutenant Kozad and Private Torres, where we'll ask them a few questions. So I'll wave them over and we'll get it started. All right, you guys will catch that paper. Thank you. All right, you can come over here. All right, so Private Torres, hello. Uh, yes, you want to say hello to the camera? Private Torres, Lieutenant Kozad. So, Private Torres, uh, what is it like to jump out of an airplane? Uh, it is like nothing you've ever experienced. You know, jumping out of that airplane, whether daytime or at night, um, just feeling the wind take you, take the legs out under you, and throw you around. It's just something else. Absolutely. Then, uh, Lieutenant Kozad, uh, what made you want to go airborne? Um, I watched Band of Brothers growing up with my dad as a kid. And I joined the Marine Corps, and there's just not many opportunities to jump. And then I found out about recon, and I honestly really thought it was awesome. And I always wanted to jump out of an airplane and get the feeling of it. So that's why I decided to come here. That's awesome. That's amazing. And then uh, Private Torres, uh, what was the hardest part of training at the Airborne School? 
Uh, I think the hardest part of training was the uh, swing trainer that we have, um, where you're just putting the risers and all you do is just swing and then practice uh, your parachute landing falls. I think that's the hardest because uh, you could get injured before a jump and it's also graded. So I thought it was the most nerve wracking for me. Absolutely, for sure. And Lieutenant Cody, are you excited to jump at your next unit? Yes, absolutely. Um, at first, I thought it would, it would be pretty nerve-wracking, but honestly, like feeling the rush of getting on the plane was one of the best feelings I've had in my life. Mm -hmm. So I'm absolutely looking forward to getting back and jumping again. Absolutely. So. No experience like it. Well, thank you yeah, all. Y'all get out process, and y'all take it easy. Congratulations again. Thank Thanks for talking with us. Thank you. Absolutely. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was our interview. That's going to wrap up our live stream today. Thank you for joining us, and have a great airborne day.